Welcome to round two of the 2017 UIM ADP Aquabike World Championship, the Grand Prix of the Mediterranean, raced in stunning Vieste, Italy. Vieste hosts its first ever UIM ABP Aquabike Grand Prix, where 75 riders from 26 countries converged for the three-day event, where the title race in Ski GP1, Ski Ladies GP1, Runabout GP1, and Freestyle would be decided. In this week's highlights show, we focus on Ski Ladies GP1 and Ski GP1. There was a lot of falls, a lot of tumbles, a lot of thrills, and also a lot of spills. Now let's take a look at beautiful Vieste. Vieste is a national park area in the Puglia region of southeast Italy, located halfway between Pescici and the wonderful coastline of Matinata. Vieste's most famous point is Pizzomuno, a vertical 25-meter-high rocky monolith standing near the Spiaggia del Castello, an area that also features amazing caves and grottos. The town has a historic medieval center, a charming maze of ancient houses and narrow alleyways studded with typical souvenir shops and craft shops. The most iconic buildings in Vieste are no doubt the castle and the cathedral, and the stroll down to the small square of Piazzetta Petrone brings to life the remarkable coastal views and stunning picture postcard scenery of this region. As a seaside town, Vieste is at one with water, which is a very important part of the local lifestyle where sea sports is highly popular. The event area is big, and local interest was very high as crowds flocked to the biggest water event in the town's history, with shows, parties and other activities on through the three-day celebration, around the clock, night and day festivity of Aquabike. The freestyle night show wowed the crowds as they gathered in anticipation of the continuation of what had been an exceptional opening round in Porto Cesario. In round one in Porto Cesario, a host of newcomers to the tour added excitement to an already talent-packed field full of former world champions. In the Ski GP1 men's division, Jeremy Pere proved masterful for Heat 1, taking the win ahead of Stan Shetline and Quinton Bosch. In Heat 2, Bosch outclassed Jeremy Pere to take the win, but Jeremy Pere had the overall Grand Prix victory, with Quinton Bosch, Grand Prix runner-up, and Shetline on the podium in third. In the ladies, everyone expected Emma Nelly Ortendahl to continue her dominance of the ladies category. Things proved tough for her though, falling back early before a late surge saw her nab the Moto 1 win. In heat two, she managed to hold on to the lead until late in the race, but she got swallowed up in the huge waves, giving the race and Grand Prix win overall to Estelle Pere of France. The Grand Prix of Italy winner, Estelle Pere, Emanelli Ortendahl runner-up, Kylie Elmer's third. The Vieste circuit is tight, with rough, unpredictable conditions and big waves expected during the event. This is a course that would really test riders' fitness, stamina and technical abilities. It's very technical, but I think it's good. It's not about who has the fastest ski, it's more about the rider and that's perfect. Yeah, the course is really tight, there is no straight ends and with the big waves it makes it really, really challenging. I was out uh, earlier today on a free practice and um, there was uh, some huge waves coming in but they were completely random so it's very difficult to see.
the ski division was packed with talented riders. Four-time world champion Jeremy Perret goes into round two as defending world champion and round one winner at the Grand Prix of Italy in Porto Cesario. But the big issue in ski now is how the big, powerful and long new Kawasaki skis are shaking up the stand-up ski scene. Jeremy Perret rides his trusty Bullet V2, but a lot of his rivals are switching to the new Kawasaki's. One of them is Quinton Bosch of Belgium, who powered past Jeremy Perret to win Heat 2 last race, and Bosch is sure to be up there with the top contenders in Vieste. Uh, the last race in Porto Cesario for me was, was really promising. Here anybody can win with any ski, any speed. It's just up to the riders now. Also riding the new Kawasaki's are Jeremy Perret's brothers, Morgan and Mikel Perret. The two-time world champion Mikel Perret will be a formidable challenger on the new skis. Uh, new Kawasaki is a very, very good boat. I think uh, more when the wave is like that. You can see normal, uh, normal boat is like 150 kilo. This one is 250 kilo. It's uh, 40 centimeters longer uh, than uh, all the boats. And also it use a four-stroke, four-stroke engine. So it's uh, very smooth to ride, easier to drive. And then there's the exceptional newcomer, Rafael Moran of France, the time trial winner in round one. Going up against the might of the Kawasaki's are Stan Shetline and Kevin Ryderer. Shetline continues to ride his Pro 4 ski and his results have been solid, getting him on the podium in Porto Cesario. He will be a top contender. As for Kevin Ryder, the 2015 world champion had a dismal start to the new year, getting zero points after an unlucky breakdown. Can he put an end to his ill fortune in Vieste? The field is once again packed with talent, including Martin Manni, Marcus Lutzekert, Benjamin Scharf, and the great veteran Alberto Monti of Italy, giving the youngsters a run for their money. Also in the mix is a new Chinese talent, He Liu. In the time trials that would determine the starting grid and pole position, the big shock in Q1 was Stan Shetline failing to qualify for Q2. In Q2, Kawasaki skis led the field as Quinton Bosch nabbed pole position, Mikel Perret second, Kevin Ryder third with Jeremy Perret qualifying down in fifth behind Rafael Moran. The first race of the Grand Prix of the Mediterranean was on. Would the young pretenders to the throne like Bosch, Rafael Moran or Stan Shetline prevail? Or would the former world champions Jeremy Perret, Mikel Perret and Ryder continue their reign? The flag is raised, the race is on, and a great start from Jeremy Perret shooting out into the lead. Quinton Bosch trying to keep up, and Mikel Perret moves ahead, but the inside lane advantage for Bosch in pole position may make up for an otherwise poor start as the field thunders toward the hole shots, led by defending world and round one champion Jeremy Perret. Jeremy Perret first to the hole shots, getting the lead early. His elder brother, Mikel Perret, chasing him in second. And behind them is a battle for third between Quinton Bosch, Stan Shetline, and the youngest Perret, Morgan. The three going head to head around the turn with Bosch on the inside. This is a packed field and the waters will be getting choppy very quickly with 30 riders on the water as they enter the alternate split course. Jeremy Perret comes out of the split course with lead intact, but he has a lot of powerful and fast riders gaining on him back there, and Mikel Perret is just behind him, the Kawasaki chasing the Bullet V2. Behind the leading Perets, Bosch in third, with Morgan Perret and Shetline in fourth and fifth. At the end of lap three, Morin continues to give chase to Shetline, who's pushing to catch Morgan Perret in fourth, but Shetline falters, he's in the water, and he gets up quick, but that's just enough to let Morin snatch fifth place. Antoine Goethals and Daniela Piscaglia rocket out of the split course neck and neck, they collide on the turn, and Piscaglia is collected out of the water, unhurt, and dropped back onto his ski to continue the race. Lap five, Bosch and Mikel Perret in a slalom showdown. Bosch in the green, Mikel Perret in the blue. There goes Jeremy Perret in the lead, and behind him, Bosch does it. His persistence pays off in the fifth lap. Quinton Bosch moves into second position, bumping Mikel Perret down to third. There's another overhaul in lap five as number 11 rider Marcus Lutzekert of Estonia passes Stan Shetline, bumping the Norwegian down a notch. 
In lap seven, Bosch keeps up the unrelenting pressure, weaving and ducking and prodding to find a chink in the Jeremy Perret armor. Coming out of the alternate course, Bosch has it. He uses his power to catch Jeremy Perret and then slip past him into the lead. He nearly loses it there in these very rough conditions, but hangs on to lead heat one. Jeremy Perret bumped down to second spot with just one lap left to go. Time running out for the French defending world champion if he's to recover the lead here, but it looks like it will be a tall order. Quinton Bosch is just too good on the day. After dropping back at the start, he produced some brilliant racing to overhaul the two Perret brothers, and that gives the Belgian rider a well-deserved win in Moto1 at Fieste. The Belgian shoots past Jeremy Perret to the top of the world standings with that win ahead of Moto2. But the race isn't over. Morgan Perret falls just meters from the finish, ruining a Perret 2 3 4. Morgan Perret eventually salvaging eight. Jeremy Perret, runner up, congratulating Bosch. Mikel Perret, third. Rafael Moran, fourth. Fifth place for Estonian Martin Manny after a last lap effort to beat fellow Estonian Marcus Lutzekert in sixth. Stanshet line seven. I managed to come closer every lap and prepare my attacks. And uh, I tried a couple of times on Jeremy, but you know, these are the guys are the best of the best. And uh, it was really hard. I overtook him, <coughs> I think, last, last, last lap or something. And uh, yeah, you know, th that was it. Uh, I got to win and I'm extremely happy for me and for my team and uh, also for my sponsors. Ladies GP1, Estelle Perret of France goes into round two in Vieste on top of the world standings following her brilliant win in round one in Porto Cesario, racing on the bullet ski. Uh, I won last weekend, so I was very happy and uh, I hope I will uh, do the same uh, today, but uh, it will be difficult because uh, there are very good riders, Emma, Jonah, and uh, it will be difficult to win again, but I'm looking for the, the race this afternoon. It was up to defending world champion Emma Nelly Ortodal of Sweden to find a way to beat her. An unlucky fall in heat two of round one cost her the Grand Prix of Italy title, and she wants to make up for that in Vieste to get back on top of the pack. Veteran New Zealander Kylie Elmers got her best ever UIM ADP Aquabike results in round one, finishing on the podium, and she wants to get back up there, if not better, in Vieste. Those top riders would also have to deal with the Borgstrom sisters, Sophie and Jona, whose results have been improving with every race and who both race with the new powerful Kawasaki. Also in the mix were the likes of Marta Sorrentino, Katrin Nilbe of Estonia, Christo Uzare of Latvia, and the return of Chinese rider number 11, Nishin Yue. In the Ski Ladies GP1 qualifying, Emanelli Ortendahl outclassed the field to take pole position, but there was a surprise number two on the starting grid with Jona Borgström ripping it up to get in ahead of Estelle Poré in third. The ladies field went out before the race for the customary parade lap. The lineup for the beach start. Great start for Emanelli Ortendahl. Jona Borgström in second is sluggish off the beach. Estelle Poré nudging ahead. Ortendahl and Kylie Elmers are first to the whole shot. Estelle Perret in third, followed by Jona Borgström and Estonian Katrin Nilbe. The race enters the alternate course. Ortendahl opening her lead early. A powerful start for Kylie Elmers behind her. Emanelli Ortendahl in the green track. Behind her, Estelle Perret in the blue and Elmers in the green, going head to head in an early slalom duel. Ortendahl comes out with lead intact, but it's a huge fight behind her. Elmer versus Perret. They come around the sausage buoy neck and neck. Elmers gets that inside advantage on the turn, and Elmers maintains her second position, but Perret fights back. There is nothing separating these two, and she does it. Estelle Perret slides past Kylie Elmers right at the start finish line. Estelle Perret moves up to second. Behind the top three riders, Jona Borgström in fourth, then Katrin Nilbe in fifth, and Sophie Borgström sixth. Tough luck for Sophie Borgström. She falters and falls in the rough waters. The ski gets away from her, and she's bumped way down to 10th as the others race by. 
out in the lead. It's all smooth sailing for Emma Nelly Ortendahl, enjoying the clear waters as she opens her lead over Pere and Elmers. Estelle Pere also opens a gap with Elmers as she comes out of the alternate track and behind her another big battle is on as Jona Borgstrom moves in on Elmers. Further back, Sophie Borgstrom is back up and passes number 66, Lisa Cosambataglia of Monaco, to climb back to ninth, trying to salvage what she can of the race. This race is all about Emanelli Ortendahl, the Swedish defending world champion, wins Moto1 in Vieste, a very easy win for her. Estelle Pore, runner-up. Kylie Elmers holds off the Jona Borgstrom challenge to take third by just a second. In fifth is Estonian Katrine Nilbe, and coming in sixth, Virginie Morlaish of France. The race was amazing. I won over a minute, so well, I don't think I can ask for more. <laughs>《Teams, Crew and UIM ABP officials were treated to Vieste hospitality as the local organizers put on a welcome cocktail reception, welcoming the first Aquabike Grand Prix to be raced in Vieste. Conditions worsened for heat two of the ladies as officials had to take precautions, briefing the riders ahead of the race. The weather conditions uh, change for worse. The problem is not on the racetrack, it's on the ramp to put the, the bikes on the water. Yeah, it will be difficult to go in the water and go out because uh, the waves are blocked just uh, before the, the ramp. So it will be difficult, but uh, today they are a very, very big wave, so it will be very fun, I think. The jet skis went in the water with a lot of care and caution as the field of 12 lady riders lined up for the beach start for Moto2 in Vieste. And the heat is on. Not a good start from Heat 1 winner Emma Nelly Ortendahl in pole. A fall right at the start from number 99 Krista Uzare of Latvia and also a fall from number 7 Virginie Morlaish cancelling out her great start. Kylie Elmers leads the race, followed by the field of 11 riders with Krista Uzare back up and racing in second, and also Marta Sorrentino right up there with the lead group, the Sardinian rider used to these rough conditions. Kylie Elmers enters the alternate course in the lead, followed by Portuguese rider Joana Grassa and Krista Uzare, all trying to deal with the exceptionally rough conditions. Estelle Pere opts for the blue track in the first alternate course of the race. Coming out of the alternate course, Kylie Elmers maintains her lead and Marta Sorrentino revels in the waves, coming out in second position. Then Estelle Pore in third, having outslalomed Krista Uzare. Behind them, Eminelli Ortendahl manages to pass her fellow Swede Sophie Borgstrom to move up into fifth and closes in on Krista Uzare of Latvia in fourth. Coming out of the split course, Elmers maintains her solid lead, but behind her, Sorrentino and Estelle Pere lock horns in the slalom. Estelle in the blue track, Marta in the green. Both riders like these conditions. Who will make it to the sausage buoy? It's Estelle Pere. Pere gets the better of Sorrentino, moving up into second position behind Elmers, bumping the Italian rider down to third. Ortendahl moves in on the Latvian rider who takes a big tumble and that sends Ortendahl through, moving up into fourth position as number 33, Katrine Nilbe, moving up into fifth. In the battle for third place, Marta Sorrentino is fending off world champion Ortendahl. Great racing from the Italian. The battle up ahead heats up too as Estelle Pore and Kylie Elmers lock horns neck and neck out there in a huge fight for the lead. Pore on the inside pushes Elmers wide and she does it. The round one champion Estelle Pore now in the lead in Moto2 of round two. She is too good for Elmers. Estelle Pore is the Moto2 and Grand Prix of the Mediterranean winner. What a result for the French ace. But Kylie Elmers can be pleased with a runner-up result, and the big surprise is a top three finish for Marta Sorrentino. What a race for the former world number three. Great to see the spirited Italian up there racing with the best of them. Ortendahl manages to finish fourth, followed by Christo Uzare. A great top five finish for her, and Jona Borgstrom coming in at sixth. 
I started free and I uh, finished uh, first, so I'm very happy because uh, it's very nice to, to win in uh, those conditions, so I'm very happy. The Grand Prix of the Mediterranean goes to Estelle Poré, her second Grand Prix win in a row. Emanelli Ortendahl is Grand Prix runner-up, and on the podium in third in Vieste is Kylie Elmers. Two podiums in a row for her, great stuff. Estelle Pere maintains her dominance atop the world standings at the end of round two, 10 points ahead of Ortendahl in second, with Kylie Elmers continuing her great run in third on 72 points. The rough conditions and bad weather continued in the men's ski GP1, making it hard to stand on those skis, let alone get the kind of speed and control needed for this tight buoy layout. Heat 1 winner Quids and Bosch would start in prime position on pole. Heat 2 is on, much better start from Bosch in pole, but Mikhail Pere is also fast off the mark, shooting ahead as Jeremy Pere lags behind the top five riders with Rafael Moran in third position, heading to the hole shots. Mikhail Pere first past the hole shot and leading the field into the circuit in rough wavy conditions, which he likes. The field enters the alternate course, Quinton Bosch taking the green track and Rafael Moran opting for the blue. Bosch is right on Mikel Pere's tail as they come out of the split course. Bosch gets past Rafael Moran as they exit the split course. Behind the three lead riders are Jeremy Pere in fourth, Martin Manny in fifth, Kevin Ryder in sixth. Moving up the field, Ryder challenging Manny for a top five position. And Ryder does it. The Austrian former world champion moves into fifth, overhauling Martin Manny. Back in the lead, the leading riders Mikhail Pore and Quinton Bosch go into the alternate course in a one-on-one -on -one parallel slalom duel in a battle for the lead. Mikhail in the green track, Bosch in the blue. The two riders come past the separator buoy. Bosch in the lead. Quinton Bosch overhauls Mikhail Pore to claim the lead in heat two two-time world champion trying to stay in touch with the Belgian, looking for an opportunity to reclaim the lead he lost. But Bosch makes a mistake. He goes to the wrong buoy, and that gives Mikel Pore the lead once more. The two trade the lead in two laps, and now Mikel Pore is the race leader once again. Back in the alternate split course, Bosch tries again to slalom past Mikel Pore. Pore in the green, Bosch opting for the blue. Mikel Pore has a slight lead. He's a very strong slalomer, a former world slalom champion. But Bosch does it again. The two trade leads once more. Rafael Moran behind them in third. A huge battle unfolds between former world champions Jeremy Pere and Kevin Ryder, who lock horns for fourth place. The two almost touching with Pere on the inside. Ryder coming tantalizingly close, but Jeremy Pere fends the Austrian off. In the middle of the pack, Marcus Lutzekert is in eighth position, followed by Morgan Pere in ninth. Then Kasper Kania of Poland, followed by Benjamin Scharf and Daniel Sve Anderson. On lap four, Kevin Ryder tries to overall Jeremy Pere in the split course. Can he outslalom Jeremy Pere? Ryder does it. He comes out of the alternate track ahead of Jeremy Pere. The Austrian moving into fourth position. Great racing from Ryder. In fifth position, Jeremy Pere lapping the back markers. He has a fall in the very rough waters, but he's able to get back up and continue without losing his spot. Quinton Bosch closes the race out in the lead. He's the winner of Heat 2, but a post-race penalty for cutting the course disqualified the Belgian, which gave the Heat win and the Grand Prix of the Mediterranean title to Mikel Pore. <laughs> Rafael Moran runner-up behind Mikel Pore, with Kevin Ryder finishing third and a fourth place for Jeremy Pore, with Martin Manny again fifth. Stan Shetline in sixth, great result for Kasper Kania in seventh, and Benjamin Scharf eighth. The overall Grand Prix of the Mediterranean results sees Mikel Pore take the title ahead of runner up Rafael Moran. Jeremy Pore on the podium in third.
I'm happy. Of course, uh, it was a long time uh, I don't win. I don't win. So I'm very happy to be on the top of the podium. I'm old now. It will be me my last, so I enjoy this moment. Jeremy Pere on top of the world standings at the end of round two, eight points up on his brother Mikel Pere, with Quinton Bosch in third and Stan Shetline in fourth. Rafael Moran completing the top five. That draws to a close yet another incredible Grand Prix. The UIM ABP Aquabike season leaves Europe for the Far East, where rounds three and four will be raced in China. See you in round three.